A bid to end SGX Nifty and Sensex futures trading in Dubai, Indian exchanges have come together and issued a joint press release. Henceforth, they will not provide data on Indian indices to foreign exchanges. Uh, we have Vikram Limai joining in, uh, um, MD and CEO of NSE. Mr. Limai, thank you so much for joining in. You know, you have already come on the channel and given us a background, but tell us what sparked the move. You know, I've said this uh, before as well. Uh, that there has been a concern about liquidity moving to offshore jurisdictions, which is obviously not good for Indian markets. Mm. And therefore, I'd said this, uh, I don't know when it was, maybe it was uh, 10 days ago, that there are various options that are being considered uh, to see how we can consolidate liquidity in India. So if you look at what, uh, what we have outlined, there's a series of things that will uh, try and consolidate liquidity hmm. uh, in Indian markets rather than fragmenting liquidity. Uh, you know, if you could just take us through some of the details, uh, Mr. Nimai, in terms of the impact and if you could just quantify this for us to help us understand this better. See, broadly it has uh, two components if you look at it. One is about licensing of indices okay. that may be used for uh, trading and settlement of offshore uh, derivative contracts. Hmm. So that would include uh, our license with uh, Singapore for the Nifty. Um, that's one set of um, uh, restrictions in terms of what exchanges are able to do. So therefore, we will have to terminate our license with SGX for the Nifty. Um, that obviously will go through its own termination clause and notice period, etc., per the agreement, which in our case with Singapore is six months. Okay. The second aspect of what we have outlined is uh, sharing of data uh, in terms of the end use restriction being for trading or settlement of offshore derivative contracts. Mm. So what we don't want is uh, other types of offshore derivative contracts, and that would also include uh, the likes of the single stock futures that was announced by Singapore, mm. where the prices are obviously of Indian securities, mm. and those prices are being obtained uh, from Indian mm. exchanges, okay. but could be from multiple sources. Okay. So exchanges could give data to other data vendors who might provide it to exchanges, etc., mm. etc. Et but whichever source mm. is getting data from the exchange, mm. what we are saying is that that data cannot be used mm. for trading or settlement of any offshore derivative okay. contract. Okay. Mr. So, Lime, uh, I yes. just wanted to know, uh, would we be outliers in doing this? Uh, or is this par for the course? It will stand uh, scrutiny in uh, international standards? No, I don't think uh, there is any uh, question of being an outlier because mm. the reality is that this is a commercial contract mm. between uh, an exchange and any other exchange or between an exchange and a data vendor. Mm. And you can certainly put restrictions surrounding what someone can do mm. with data or restrictions surrounding, I mean, nobody can force us to mm. license our index, mm. right? It is up to us whether we want to Fair license point. it or not. Fair point. So do you think that this can be circumvented in any fashion and some kind of der derivative products may nevertheless uh, uh, be offered? We hope not because I think we are quite clear in our uh, press release about the restrictions surrounding the end use of data for pricing any uh, pricing, trading, and settling any offshore derivatives okay. contract. Okay. Mr. Lemay, if, uh, if, just to people, if, if people end up finding a why needed to try and do that, I'm sure that we will take a look at it if this were to happen and see what else is available for us to try and mm -hmm. control that situation. Because ultimately, please understand, the objective is to try and consolidate liquidity in Indian markets yeah, rather right. than fragment liquidity. No, no, I mean, I absolutely understand the intent, uh, Mr. Lemay. Just a final question. My colleague uh, Prashant is just joining in. When yeah. does this kick in? Like, when do we see the last trades in SGX Nifty? So, like I said, our contract with SGX for the Nifty has a six-month notice period. Okay, okay, so, okay. that is, we will have to give a notice period before sure. we terminate, but that's the notice period for our SGX Nifty. Sure. Uh, Mr. Lemai, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, hi. Just a couple of uh, questions. What, uh, you know, so, will can, can trading in single stock futures uh, really be stopped? Because uh, unlike the Nifty, which is essentially uh, licensed, uh, it's, stocks are not really, I mean, those codes are not really licensed to any uh, particular organization, right? I mean, can that really be stopped uh, uh, by, by, by action uh, from you and other what, exchanges? See, what, what we've outlined is um, the sources from, uh, what we've outlined is that the use of data, right? And to, to price any single stock futures contract, you need a settlement price, you need data. You might also need an intraday price. 
right. on that security, right? right? That that data has to be obtained from somewhere. Right. Okay. Ultimately, the prices on of securities people are able to get from the exchanges. Now, whether right. they get it through market participants, they get it through data vendors, or they get it through any source, it mm -hmm. is generally data that the in that the exchange is providing to somebody. Correct. So all all our arrangements for data sharing right. will build in this clause that right. this data cannot be used for pricing, trading, or settlement of any offshore derivative contract. Right. So a data vendor will obviously have to build in that restriction if he is on selling that data to any user of that data that he cannot use it for any offshore derivatives contract. Right, right. So legally, legally we believe that there will be a restriction in terms of end use of this data right. for pricing, trading, and settlement of an offshore derivative contract. Fair enough. Mr. Lemai, the SGX Nifty as a product is extremely popular. Uh, yeah. would, uh, could you tell us a couple of things? I mean, what uh, what was the licensing agreement? I mean, uh, what is the revenue that you made uh, via this agreement with uh, the Singapore Exchange on SGX Nifty, the product itself? I mean, for example, last year. Yeah, and, so I, and, yeah. I, you know, I, we don't get into specifics of um, details on every licensing product and all that. Hmm. I think all I can say is that uh, it is not a material amount uh, relative to the, the objective of doing what is right for Indian markets and making sure that liquidity consolidates in the Indian markets. You know, the, the start to the single stock futures uh, in Singapore was, actually was very tepid. Maybe it is because of the current market conditions that we, are, we have. Uh, but it, 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 it didn't really take off uh, with, with a big uh, flourish. Do you think this move uh, may, be, uh, may, may be a bit in the extreme? Or, uh, and, and why was this really necessary? And it seems like since all, you know, all the exchanges have come to, together to do this, there is a push from the authorities uh, for all of you to go ahead and do this as well. Am I right in that reading? See, I, I think to answer your first question, obviously single stock future has been launched by, uh, by Singapore only about four days, five days ago. It was on Monday. Mm. So uh, it takes time to build any liquidity in any new product. Okay. Mm. So <clears throat> obviously, if liquidity hasn't built in five days, it doesn't mean anything. The broader point is that what we are trying to do is to make sure that we have appropriate framework in place so that liquidity doesn't move offshore. And if there is liquidity that has already built offshore, that we figure out a way to bring it back. What we have also done, which is important to note, is that we don't want to constrain flows into India. Therefore, right. we are saying that we will continue to share data with any index or anybody who is using that data for raising ETF money, et cetera, that will flow back into India. So what we don't want is a situation where ETFs are being raised on the back of certain indices. Those indices will anyway be getting data from exchanges. Mm. But if those indices are used for raising ETF money, mm. that is certainly permissible. And we will continue with all those arrangements. Do you uh, think coming to your last I... point, coming yeah. to your last point about yeah. You know, whether this was a push by a regulator or et cetera, et cetera. As I said, this has been a conversation that has been ongoing. Mm. Uh, I think we are all aligned in terms of what we need to do. That uh, is uh, the best Levin, when you say conversation has been ongoing, conversation between finance ministry, SEBI, exchanges, uh, should we I can't that? Get in, I, I, I can't get into specifics of uh, who we had conversations with, but you should assume that obviously what we have initiated uh, will be with uh, the full understanding or, and knowledge of SEBI. We will not come out with uh, things of this nature with SEBI being unaware of what we're doing. Would we see tit-for-tat uh, kind of actions? I mean, for example, we have foreign exchanges trading on the uh, NSC uh, exchange, right? Uh, you know, tomorrow, uh, with this as a precedent in a way, what stops uh, others from doing this here? I mean, if, for example, this kind of a... Yeah, sorry, go on. No, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, I, there isn't any kind of uh, liquidity of any other jurisdiction that is built in India that should result in any kind of action from any other uh, exchange. But, uh, you know, it is well within any exchange's rights or any regulator's rights to try and do what is in the best interest of their domestic markets. No, we get, we get that, Mr. Limai. One final word very quickly before we wrap. What would you tell investors who perhaps might be impacted by this? Who's what will be impacted? What would you tell investors that perhaps might be impacted by this move? There is an option available for people to trade in India. So they can certainly trade in India. They can trade in gift city. Mm -hmm. There are avenues available for them to continue to trade in Nifty or in uh, underlying Indian stocks. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, fair enough.